When a researcher creates indicators to represent concepts in their research, they will usually select a, a set of variables um, to represent those concepts in their research. And when when variables are examined in a study, there are different levels of mathematical precision to which those variables can be represented. In this lecture, we're going to talk about those levels of precision. And specifically, we're going to talk about different levels of measurement that can be applied to variables that are used in social research studies. Levels of measurement is an extension of the measurement process. Measurement refers to when we assign numbers, labels, or categories to units of analysis to represent variable categories. Um, so we might measure characteristics of people uh, as different variables, and those variables can take on values, categories, um, that we'll use um, to represent empirical indicators of concepts in our research study. If you think back a few weeks ago, we talked about different how variables represent characteristics of units that vary. Variables take on different values, categories, or attributes. We talked about two examples of variables in social research, one being age, the other being gender. There's, there's kind of, um, there, when you look at variables, these, these variables can take on different values or attributes. So if you take age, for example, Age can take on uh, various numerical values, including 1, 12, 23, 44, 53, or 69. Um, this, this, there's, the age, these values, there's, for age, have, age has a true zero point. Um, there are equal distances between um, values of age. And we, we know that 2 is twice as old as 1 that 24 is twice as old as 12. And this is fundamentally different from other types of variables like gender, where categories of gender might, you might assign people categories of gender such as male, female, or transgender. But these variables, while they can be assigned numerical values um, to represent categories, you cannot um, rank order these gender categories. You cannot multiply or divide categories of gender. Um, they don't have the same level of mathematical precision that values such as age can take on. And this is the, the point that relates to this idea of levels of measurement. Levels of measurement refer to the characteristics of measures that indicate the kind of inferences that the researcher can draw on when they compare um, variable categories or values to one another. Another way of thinking about levels of measurement is levels of measurement refer to the mathematical precision with which values of a variable can be expressed. And we'll talk about more about what that means. There are four levels of measurement in for uh, variable indicators in social research. There are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Um, and these are these are expressed in their level of mathematical precision. So ratio variables have the highest level of mathematical precision, while nominal variables have the least uh, mathematical precision in their um, categories, um, values, or attributes. Nominal measurement refers to cases on a variable that can be classified into two or more categories. The numbers might be applied to a nominal variable, but only to indicate the uh, label of category measurement. For instance, we might code um, gender uh, as one, two, or three, depending on some, whether somebody is male, female, or transgender. And that might just be used as a, a categorical variable in a, a research study. Um, categories on a nominal variable cannot be ranked or ordered. Um, also, it's important that categories on a nominal variable are mutually exclusive, so observations can only be classified into one category. They can't be classified into two categories. Also, that's, that, that means that they're mutual, ex mutually exclusive. Also, um, categories 
on a nominal variable must also be exhaustive so that every obser every possible empirical observation can be classified into one of the categories that exists for that variable. One example of a nominal variable would be political party affiliation. Um, political party preference in the United States might be classified into one of the following categories, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Other, or no preference. And every um, individual within the United States might be classified into one of these political party preference categories. They are mutually exclusive in that if you are a Republican, you don't fit in the Democrat box. Um, if you're independent, you don't fit in the Republican box. Also, they're exhaustive in that everybody can sort of fit into one of these categories on the variable. Ordinal measurement is slightly more precise than nominal. So on an ordinal measure, the observations on a variable can be ranked ordered, that one is greater or lesser than another value. One value can be ranked higher or lower than another. Um, so the numbers assigned to a variable might indicate their rank ordering of cases. An example of an ordinal variable might be um, the responses to a depression screening that somebody, a patient, might receive when they go into a doctor's office. Uh, many, many physicians use and nurses use the Patient Health Questionnaire 2, the PHQ-2, to screen for depression in patients. Um, and responses, it's a very simple uh, screening questionnaire. It's just two questions. And responses to each of the questions can be ranked ordered. And there are four values, 0, 1, 2, 3, where 0 refers to not at all, 1 refers to several days, 2 refers to more than half the days, and 3 refers to nearly every day. So we know that nearly every day is greater than not at all, that more than half the days is greater than several days. Um, so responses to each of these questions can be ranked ordered, and that's what makes it an ordinal variable. Interval measures are even more precise than ordinal measures. So interval measures, the observations on an interval measure can be ranked, um, ranked and ordered, as well as on an interval measure, the interval measure, there are equal distances or intervals between numbers that are assigned to that variable. The researcher, because there are equal distances or intervals between numbers assigned to the variable, the researcher can perform basic mathematical operations on that variable, such as addition or subtracted. So values can be um, added or subtracted from one another. However, because there is not a true zero point on an interval measure, the researcher cannot multiply or divide values on the variable. They can't perform ratios. An example of an interval variable might be the um, Fahrenheit temperature scale. Values on the, Varen, on the Fahrenheit temperature scale can be ranked and ordered. We know that 90 degrees is higher than 80 degrees, and we know that 50 degrees is higher than 40 degrees, and we know that 30 degrees is lower than 40 degrees. Um, there are equal intervals between degrees on the scale, um, so we know that the interval between between 41 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as the interval between 32 degrees and 31 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the zero degree point on the Fahrenheit scale is somewhat an arbitrary point on the scale. There are values less than zero, and because of this, we can't say that we can't multiply or divide values on the Fahrenheit temperature scale. So we can't say that 100 degrees Fahrenheit is twice as hot as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The, there is not enough mathematical precision on the Fahrenheit temperature scale because it's an interval variable. There's not a true zero point. Um, so we can't perform, we can perform addition and subtraction, but we can't perform multiplication and division. The highest level of measurement on variables in social research is ratio measurement. There are, there are three characteristics of ratio measurement. Observations on a ratio measure can be rank ordered. There are equal distances or intervals between numbers assigned to the variable. 
And there is also an absolute true and non-arbitrary zero point on ratio measures. Because of there's a zero point, there's equal distances between intervals, and observations can be rank ordered, the researcher can pretty much perform every type of mathematical operation that they want to. So they can add, subtract, multiply, and divide values on a ratio variable. An example of a ratio variable might be annual household income. Annual household income is a ratio variable because values can be ranked, ordered, there are equal distances between values on the variable. Um, we know that 20, the, the interval between 10 and $20,000 is the same as the interval between 20 and $30,000. In addition, income has a true zero point. Values can be, we know that somebody can have zero income, they can have no income. And val because of this, values can be divided between one another. So we know that $100,000 of income is twice that uh, $50,000 of income. Um, so these are the characteristics of a ratio level variable.